Hi there, everyone, and welcome to another session in the BIM Harambe Africa conference. I hope everyone is enjoying the content and really learning a lot from our continent, as well as welcome to all of those that are joining us from outside the African continent. Today's session is going to be on the power of BIM for civil infrastructure. Throughout the conference, we have been seeing the amazing impact of BIM for vertical construction mostly, being in architectural and anything going towards the sky, literally. But what about linear infrastructure, which forms a critical part of civil infrastructure? This is exactly what we're going to be looking at in today's session. Of course, it's presented by myself. My, I am Shu'ab Yunus. I am the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Bains in South Africa. I am a Civil Design Technologist, BIM for Civil Infrastructure Specialist, as well as an Autodesk Certified Instructor. I have presented at many events across the globe, be it in person or online. Um, some of them being Autodesk University Africa at the South African Institute of Civil Engineers, as well as being selected to present at Autodesk University Las Vegas. Also this year, we have had a lot of online conferences, be it in the form of webinars, virtual events, and with the upcoming Autodesk University 2020, I will also be presenting there. So I have commonly or constantly shared my expertise with fellow industry professionals, thus empowering them to build a better Africa and a better world. I really want to spur on digital transformation within the civil infrastructure industry, and hopefully with a combined effort of this event and many in the future, we will achieve just that. So with that introduction done, let's look at what the agenda looks like for this, for this session. First of all, we're gonna look at the components of civil infrastructure. What does it actually comprise of? And then we're gonna be jumping into why BIM is so critical or so impactful for civil infrastructure. Then I'm going to be showcasing you some of the BIM technologies for intelligent civil infrastructure, making life much more easier, efficient, and intelligent in the civil infrastructure space. And then we're gonna wrap it up and get going. So what components form civil infrastructure? As you can see on my screen, there are six critical components, namely survey, so of course, anything topographical, you, every project starts off with a site. So it's a very critical part of the project starting phase. If we look at site development, especially with the rapid urbanization throughout the world, we always got a lot of developments that are coming up that need to be catered for in terms of infrastructure requirements. And then of course, in transportation, we've got roads and highways, rail, as well as airports. And then of course, water and wastewater. As you can see, these are very, very critical infrastructure to any country in the world. And we really need to find ways to be much more efficient to improve the quality of life for to those who are actually benefiting of these infrastructure, which is everyone around us. But what are the challenges faced in civil infrastructure currently? Well, of course, design has become more complex as time has progressed and innovative technologies have come across, we are seeing much more complex design, much more innovative designs being put forward. And our old traditional ways of doing things are very painful, manual, and inaccurate. This also leads to a lot of design errors because due to inaccurate data or capturing of existing conditions, which is a vital part of the civil project life cycle. Every designer, every construction person, every contractor knows about project deadlines and projects running over time and budget is really not a good thing. Collaboration, especially if you're working in a consortium, so you've got the architect, you've got the QS, you've got the structural engineer, you've got the civil engineer, uh, you've got the MEP, HVAC, you've got all of these design or these professionals in industry that need to work together and work, and if you're looking at ways of actually bringing it together, we're normally 
face real challenges when it comes to actual effective integration across multiple teams and disciplines. Then of course, with the advocation of BIM and its impact, it is making waves in the disciplines that we normally know and see every day, especially in the architecture, engineering and construction industry. And the transition from 2D to 3D BIM intelligent design is a bit of a transition, especially from those consultants or those design firms that have been doing it the manual way. Project management, it's a given, especially uh, scheduling and forecasting. If the above are a problem, it's gonna have a domino effect on the scheduling and forecasting. And then of course, every design or every company, every firm wants to be much more profitable. Not only that, but you also want to do much more sustainable designs that are gonna be living out their design life. So these are the challenges that we have picked up in the civil infrastructure industry. So this brings me to my next question, which is, why BIM for civil infrastructure? Well, especially for Africa, why is, there, why is there such a need for BIM in the civil infrastructure space in Africa? The infographic on your screen says it all. We have 54 countries in our continent. We are the second largest and second most populous continent after Asia in both cases. Just let that sink in. We are a very, very big community, right, in Africa. We cover 6% of the Earth's total surface area and 20% of its land area. We have about 1.3 billion people as of 2018, and it accounts about 16% of the world's human population. And we have the youngest average population amongst all the continents in the world. Our median age is 19.7 as of 2012, and worldwide it was 30.4. If this doesn't give you a reason to rethink how we are doing civil infrastructure in our continent, I don't know what would. We have a young, vibrant, growing economy. We have a very populous um, population, if I could use that. The continent is ever growing, and we need to provide and cater for those civil infrastructure needs that's needed throughout the continent. So this is why BIM will make an impact in Africa. And if you're thinking of what are the impacts or what are the project benefits of BIM, again, a picture says a thousand words, right? If you look at the infographic on the right, you've got design, build and operate. That's just a summarized version of a typical design project or a project in general but the model is in the center of the actual process, meaning that the data has been fed to that model constantly, live data, metadata, where you're not left with a 2D drawing anymore, but rather you are left with a data rich model that can be used for efficient operations, maintenance, construction, design, much more insightful, allowing you to streamline your processes as well as pick up if there's any errors way before construction and if you look at the wheel that has all of the benefits you can see fewer errors is the chunk of that i mean if you have less errors that's less cost that's less overtime in terms of your project running over it just makes everything work much more better especially according to the way that you prefer it the greater predictability of predicting cost is also there. There's better understanding, there's improved scheduling. Of course, your design can be optimized, but this can only be done if you have intelligent processes that you can apply. And this is where the power of BIM for civil infrastructure is so, so great. Okay, so now that I have painted a great picture for you and given you an understanding as to why BIM is so great for Africa and for any continent throughout the world. We're going to look at some of the technologies for intelligent civil infrastructure. Now, again, these are the technologies that I believe in and I have used throughout my civil design career. And it's irrespective of, of brand or application, but it's more of the impact that it is making. Remember, BIM is a process 
the software is more of an enabler to that process. So we're going to be looking at reality capture, design and collaboration, as well as construction verification. I've just got short snippets of each one just to show you how impactful it can be when wielded in the correct manner in conjunction with them. So let's start off with survey. There are a variety of technologies in surveying construction and they go across multiple disciplines and fields. You've got surveying construction, which is the biggest one. You've got agriculture, you've got machine control, you've got 3D measurement and mass data. All of these are fairly automated and much more intelligent now with the technologies that we have. Why people aren't really adopting them? I would think it's because of awareness and lack of understanding. And this is why this conference is great. It's getting out that message to show people that technology has become an enabler to making our lives much more streamlined, much more intelligent, much more innovative. So if you're looking at survey, generally we would have received the points from a surveyor in a text file, CSV, and with the advent of technology, before you couldn't really geolocate those points. But with BIM intelligent technologies and geolocation, you can now actually import that survey data to a geotip, as you're seeing here on my screen, and you can see the verification of the imagery in conjunction with the imported data. This allows us to actually verify our points as a surveyor to see if everything looks correct relative to the actual design environment. And it makes it much more easier to do much more streamlined and much more dynamic design. And if we look at the latest or the, the hot topic in industry, it's of course drones where you can actually program your flight path onto a tablet, set up your control points, and literally let the drone do all of the hard work for you. This results, you can do it either via LiDAR or photogrammetry, like you've seen here, it's photogrammetry. And because of the intelligent technologies that we have available to us today, we can literally stitch this together at a very highly accurate level and get what you're seeing on the screen right here. Imagine having this at a concept stage, how much more insight will be applied in the detailed design stage. And again, this same level of detail can be brought into your design authoring tool of choice, where not only does it have the elevation data like you're gonna be seeing here, it also has the aerial imagery that's attached to it for more insight and space planning, coordination, those type of things. And with the dynamic nature that BIM intelligent tools provide, you can actually do your design in 2D with a 3D being the byproduct, as well as see any dynamic changes that's related to your design, giving you much more insight as previously, where we would normally sketch it in 2D and we would try to make sure that the 3D model is up to date relative to the section views and elevations that we would normally get. So with tools that are that dynamically connected, as you can see, it applies throughout civil infrastructure, like you're seeing here, we're doing a stormwater network. And as you're updating the position in plan, the section and profile can be then adjusted intelligently, where we could raise, lower, update the cover, and also the terrain or final earthworks can be adjusted. So survey has made life or technologies in the survey space has made things very much automated and it's great to see in the civil infrastructure industry the adoption of this especially when it comes to lidar and drone scanning the next aspect is site and land development right so as you've seen in my previous slide we've got 1.3 billion people as of I think it was 2012, if I'm not mistaken, that population needs sufficient infrastructure. And especially throughout Africa, especially here in Johannesburg, we have a lot of real estate and developments coming up every day. You'll be driving through the roads and you will see 
that the requirements, the need for housing, for infrastructure, for facilities, for anything that can improve the quality of life to people in general, as well as give them really safe and conducive conditions to live in, these come in the form of estates, okay? Where great concepts are done, they are approved, and then they would need to be mapped accordingly. Now, what you're seeing here is the ability to link conceptual design, but with a lot of built intelligence, where before we would need to draw this in 2D, try and make it look as understandable as possible to those that are non-technical. And being a designer myself, it's always a problem uh, or a challenge rather to convey technical data in a very simple way to those that are actually more or less funding the project or providing the capital that may not have an engineering or technical background. And this is where 3D modeling design and detailing comes into place, where as you're seeing here, it's actually still in conceptual design stage, but look at the tools that we have to get it that much closer to the de detailed design or realistic design intent with the BIM intelligent technologies, we are now able to get that much closer to the detailed design phase in the actual conceptual design. And when this can be more or less approved, where you present your concept to your client and you bring it in, this is where your detailed design can be complete or verified. And this just results in refining the conceptual design. So what if you could get your conceptual design as close to your final design? This saves you on time, money, it increased efficiency, it allows us to make much more insightful decisions. You can create a lot of alternatives. And I mean, the possibilities are quite endless if you can get that much detail in an earlier part of the actual project. So, Another great thing with BIM technologies is when the detailed design has been done, you can actually link it back to the visual aspect or the 3D elements of the actual BIM technologies. And you can actually convey this technical data in a much more simplistic and highly visual phase. Like you're seeing here, the roads were done of the complex. We're just going to be sizing in terms of the development area or earth's plots whichever tech the terminology you use in your in your space and as you can see this can be mapped and this is the result now imagine com combining this with your architectural model your house per plot your zoning um, it just makes collaboration not only for civil infrastructure but across industries that much better and then we jump into road and rail. As we know, every infrastructure needs access and roads and rail provides that access, irrespective of how amazing that infrastructure must be, if we cannot access it at, in a safe manner, it's futile. And this is where a lot of design opportunities come in with intelligent BIM modeling. As you can see on your screen here, I've thrown in or showed you some bridge designs where, again, it's done in a highly visual yet parametric environment where you could actually collaborate amongst geometric and structural disciplines as well as architectural disciplines, as simple as a right click, where enhanced collaboration can be done. As you can see, the ge geometry comes in the efficiency and update or intuitive thinking across disciplines has now increased. This is the intelligence that BIM brings along with it. And as you can see, it allows the structural engineer, the geometrics engineer, the architect all to be in sync as to what is the latest design and what is the latest revision uh, according to the project. This connectivity, this uh, interchange of data, this live data that has been available to us, allows us to design much more intelligently for infrastructure. 
as you can see, everything is literally synced. So if there's a change to a peer or a parametric object, it is then linked into the structural engineer's model for the bridge and the civil engineer or the geometrics engineer for the road. And combined with highly visualistic design intent, it makes life easy for everyone across the BIM civil infrastructure project lifecycle. And then when it comes to rail, I see that there's not that much focus in rail, especially in a lot of conferences. So I thought, let me show you how rail can be automated. So with point cloud extraction technologies, this one being linear infrastructure, if we do a laser scan of the actual as-built state of the rail, we can actually extract profiles across rail infrastructure, automating it for quality assurance. Not only that, the seamless integration and synchronization, again, across civil and rail design is so synchronized. I don't know which other word to use. I mean, it's so much more dynamic, so much more connected where you could actually do your cant, your bridge girders, your retaining walls, um, your platforms for your rail. And you can do it at a really high level of detail. And of course, as you can see here, you can actually visualize your design. You can see the tracks according to what you would need it to be, as well as reporting functionality, intelligence, and sectioning. Not only that, it can again then be shared with the architect in um, a, a Revit or an architectural platform that's BIM intelligent, so that the, for example, the stations and whatever other infrastructure is linked in accordingly. Not only that, but we can now also drop in intelligent infrastructure, like as you can see here, the rail with the ballasts and all of the accompanying detail going through a tunnel, which then can be detailed to the level of spec that's needed. So I'm sure that the common theme that you're actually picking up across my presentation is the increased synchronization. That's where BIM for civil infrastructure normally gets hit the hardest, where we cannot bring in together multiple disciplines in a dynamic, coordinated way. And this is what BIM affords us to do. And then if you want to look at really amazing automation, we've got something called visual scripting. Now, visual scripting is more of running scripts in order to automate a lot of tasks that you would normally do manually, all right? And I mean, the tool that you hear a lot in industry, it's also used by architects, structural engineers, civil engineers, is Dynamo. At the moment, it is a real hot topic in terms of design automation in the civil infrastructure space, where a lot of tedious tasks can be automated. Like, for example, you'll see here, we're going to be placing those barriers just by, I would call it parameters. That's the correct word. And it is parametric driven, meaning that depending on the data that you put in, it will actually automate that for you. Like you can see here for the design ramps, not only that, it is again dynamic. Dynamic, you will hear me say this word a lot, it allows us not to worry about the latest um, extent of the model, meaning that everything is updated in real time. And depending on what your inputs are, irrespective of whether it's sewer, pipelines, lighting, rail design, all of these can be scripted. A lot of these scripts are available online to help you get started. And from there, you can automate and further streamline civil infrastructure design and delivery. Then we're going to look at water and wastewater. Again, very critical. I thought it will be quite nice to show one for stormwater and then one, one for sewer. All right. And as you can see here, again, this visual element of design is critical, especially for services and utilities that are below ground. If you're looking at it in 2D, it becomes really complex, especially for the person that's not really technical and does not know the fine details behind it. 
So what we're doing here is if you drop in those um, pipes in a 3D interface, you can then link it in again to a detailed design tool where your long sections, your grades, your slopes, your pipe diameters, um, your sump depths, your structures, all can be updated and checked so that it complies to the required specification and it will make things much more streamlined. And if you're looking at more of the infrastructure part of it, so I thought I'll throw in some of the cloud collaboration, especially now when we are in uh, COVID times where people need to work together separately yet be connected and cloud collaboration plays a big role of that. And with the advent of cloud collaboration, we can now do designs in a very highly connected manner. As you can see, PNIDs form a great part or a critical part of a civil infrastructure, especially if you're doing wastewater treatment plants and process plants like that. With intelligent design and piping tools, even for buildings, um, linking it to the architectural model, it just makes life so much easier. It gives you an automated bill of materials. It's highly visual, highly dynamic. It's spec driven. So if you do put in a pipe, it will put in the connect fitting based on the library that's available to it. And not only that, we can actually highlight things and mark up things so that people throughout the world can actually revise this, the design in real time. And we cannot talk about utilities and water without ArcGIS or GIS data. GIS data is so important when it comes to operations and maintenance, where we can now integrate GIS metadata to our BIM model. Like you're seeing here, this is the integration or the link with ArcGIS online, with the with ESRI being the leader in GIS data, bringing in that metadata and attaching it to your 3D BIM model, it is a game changer for anyone. I mean, if you can have all of this data that you're seeing on my screen readily available, and in conjunction with operation and maintenance procedures, you can prevent a burst pipe, ensuring that you can flag it before its maintenance is actually due or its replacement or expiring date. As you can see, it also brings in the elevation data. It brings in the type of pipe when it was installed. And plus with the attribute data or the GIS functionality that's built into many different software, you can now even add your own attribute data if data is missing. So you could actually flag when this part needs to be replaced, what type of material, you can add a catalog. GIS gives us much more informative design. Coming to cloud collaboration, I mean, Again, these are the tools that I have used and hence this is why I'm presenting it. You may use different tools throughout the world. The main thing is, as long as it's giving you that intelligent edge in infrastructure and it provides you with that, that enhanced functionality, that's great. So these are from Autodesk where they have taken cloud collaboration to a new level with document management, BIM360 design where if you are in a structural, architectural, civil, as well as plant environment, makes it much more greater to coordinate. Speaking about coordinates, there is one where you can do model uh, coordination in the cloud across different disciplines, checking for clashes and everything before it hits construction stage, saving you time, money, and I would call painful headaches. <laughs> and of course, you've got BIM 360 bill. So since we are focusing on civil infrastructure, I thought that in the construction phase, how do we streamline our quality assurance and checking of, design, of construction? This is where BIM 360 build comes in. Now, normally when we go on site, we would normally have a clipboard with paper where we would actually tag certain things or write it down. We would use a site diary. What if all of that could be in the palm of your hand, like you're seeing here? So commonly we have quality assurance checks that we do in construction. We've got punch lists, we've got commissioning. All of that can be done, including safety, using your mobile device. So imagine just clicking on the answer on your mobile device as it's going. And once you hit approve or you send it, 
it actually updates and all of the project members have been informed. You've also got da um, dashboards that allow you to check up the progress of your design and your progress on site in general. You can also create issues, you can assign it to the responsible personnel and it just allows you to get that much more control in managing and scheduling uh, design, hence inform decision making, improve outcomes and of course projects on time and within budget. So definitely a game changer on the construction part of things, really connecting what's happening on site to those in the office. When it comes to ASBEL capture, again, a critical part component of civil infrastructure. So now that you have constructed or you have a final element that commissioned and handed over, you, you really need to capture the ASBEL state of it before that happens. And the easiest way to actually do it is using laser scanning technologies, right? But also when it comes to laser scanning, you've got a lot of different technologies um, that help you to actually further automate this. And one of the technologies that I really believe in and we've worked with is Clear Edge 3D. Now, if you're looking at modeling or a point cloud extraction, there's something called Edgewise, which actually automates the extraction of geometry from point clouds, which saves up to 75% of time, especially when it comes to the modeling phase. Generally, we would do laser scanning, we will get a point cloud, and we have to really manually trace it, if I could call it that. And that is still cumbersome, even if you are using BIM intelligent tools. Definitely a game changer and time saver on ASBEL capture. You've also got something called Verity, which combines the point cloud of the ASBEL building relative to the initial design model. And then, of course, if you are in the concrete game and you really want to check your floor flatness or your floor levelness. You've got a quality assurance tool called Rhythm that really is very, very accurate. It reduces costly and time consuming rework and it also flags the issues whether your concrete is wet or dry. It's really something that is remarkable to think of, especially where we are today and the technology advancements in our era. So, if you can really manage that and flag those type of things, the possibilities are endless and the quality, the level of delivery really goes up for civil infrastructure. So what I thought I would show is Verity, okay, where, like I said, you have done the design and you've got the model like you're seeing there. And as we know, normally in construction, things don't really go into exact positioning as relative to the design model. It might be a little to the left, a little bit to the right, a little bit up, a little bit down. I mean, uh, it does happen. And it could be because there could be a slight deflection in the initial design, and that's why the positioning needed to be updated. But this can be applied with literally any scope of work. It can be MEP, concrete, walls, finishes, steel structure, so much where you can actually combine it. And as you can see on the screen, you've got the design model versus where the actual element ended up being constructed. And with the overlay of the point cloud and the model, it gives you such realistic intent of what needs to be updated in your initial model to provide a much more streamlined, as built, up-to-date, accurate model. As you can see below, it even gives you the metadata that's associated to each object. Right, tabulated data, you would hear this metadata is the king when you are talking about really doing digital twinning. You will hear this quite a bit. And it'll give you the difference between the point cloud and the actual object. All of this data is given to you using intelligent extraction technology, intelligent verification technology, hence the name Verity. I mean, as you can see here, you can actually heat map the objects and get a really good comparison. You can toggle or have a view along the 3D model. Not only that, you can switch on and off the point cloud versus the design stage. But there is something that's really amazing with these type of technologies. First of all, 
you can export that data. So if you are compiling a quality report, you can always do that simply by right-clicking export. I mean, there's so much of functionality that's built into these type of technologies. Not only that, we can also single out items uh, depending on the nature of our situation. So you don't really have to bulk export it. Again, collaboration is a key thing in civil infrastructure where you can now bring in that quality data across different disciplines. And with the intelligence built in, look at the right-hand side where you could actually update the model to snap into place to the as-built state. So definitely technologies like this are allowing us to do such high level of accuracy or such high level of quality when handing over our as-built models. Last but not least, or coming towards the end of my presentation is IoT. Now, IoT is a game changer when it comes to operations and maintenance. If you haven't heard of it, it's, it stands for the Internet of Things, and it uses devices and sensors to aggregate data, allowing us to be much more efficient and effective to preventative tasks on site or at plant or whatever you are using it for. It's real-time data, so it's going to allow you exactly to know when things are going to need to be replaced or what's going on. It promotes sustainability because now you can fix something before it really gets broken and then gives you a lot much more um, cumbersome task to, to execute. Okay, and you cannot be doing digital twinning without IoT. It's not a complete solution. IoT provides that extra edge that's needed for real digital twinning. Again, there's a lot of customizations, APIs, uh, apps that are actually catered for this and integrate with these type of um, systems. As you can see, it goes across the board, but I just thought to show you that IoT goes across technology and industries. So this is just an example of a very basic IoT system where you could actually, let me just go back there, apologies. Here we go. So this just shows you that you can actually create your own dashboards and preventative tasks, right? Simply by adding it to an app on your phone. So again, if you have sensors that are actually wired up to this and you've got the data that's streaming in, you can actually look at all of this on a dashboard level. As you can see, we're scheduling tasks. So if you know that a certain part needs to be replaced like every six months, for example, it will actually create it on the dashboard. As you can see, you've got upcoming overdue tickets completed. And again, from the palm of your hand, you can also assign it to a specific technician who can then do like a punch list, tick off the activities that are done and you can make your way on. Again, that is very basic because of time constraints. I really didn't want to dive into it deep, but even with machine control on construction sites, same procedure, really, really insightful, accurate design. Last but not least, if we look at design simulation and construction visualization, with the 4D and 5D simulation, we now have the power to actually simulate and track scheduling across our design stage. Like for example, here we are just automating the or simulating the construction of a road as per our construction schedule. And the great thing with this is you can actually predict that after two months, this road should be completed or these excavations should be done up to change maybe 800. Okay, so this again gives you much more quality control, verification, collaboration, insight in civil infrastructure. And if you add in costs, that makes it 5D, which again, I mean, before we didn't have these tools. And the reason why I'm showing them today is to create awareness in civil infrastructure that these tools are now there to make our life much more easier if you are still doing it in a manual way. 
And then, of course, we cannot leave out the visualization aspect. So I created this at my one of my previous webinars, just I was messing around, but just gives you an idea that this is how you can actually pitch design concepts and design proposals with the technologies that we have, where we can now create fly throughs of the design and we can literally do whatever we need to. I mean, we can adjust the angles, we can adjust the heights, we can adjust the qualities. Um, again, this is a very, very basic um, visualization. I didn't go anything complicated, but look at how effective this is, irrespective of how basic it is. First of all, can you see the realistic nature? If you, for example, look at the shadow effects, the geo terrain, and not only that, we can also display below ground features. For example, I did a drainage design and I wanted to show, um, this is more or less how the structures are going to look. You can also see the pile caps for the bridge that's coming ahead. And this will give us much more buy-in from uh, stakeholders. I mean, this has the technical data, but in a very, very conceptual, realistic, simplistic way. And if we can convey our designs in this manner, I mean, can you imagine the collaboration or the insight that we will have? It will be a real game changer in our industry, especially when we're doing these complex establishments where you would need to display various infrastructure elements at various phases. This is the key way to go. And this is not even VR and AR. I mean, this is very basic, but it still gets the job done relative to conventional 2D methods. So let's wrap things up. As you can see, I've showed you a lot of uses for BIM intelligent technologies, the impact of BIM for civil infrastructure, not only in Africa, but throughout the world. But since this is an African event, we really need to utilize it as African professionals throughout our continent. I would like to leave you with this last slide again, just to remind you that we are the world's second largest continent and populist um, population. We are 20% of Earth's land area, and we have the, long, the youngest average population amongst all the continents. So for this, we're definitely going to need BIM, and hopefully by championing and getting out the impact, the awareness and the benefits of building information modeling for civil infrastructure, we will all achieve this together. So thank you very much. I hope that this was very insightful, very, very um, thought provoking across the fellow professionals and all of you that are tuned in here today. And here's to a better future for Africa and beyond. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.